Hello fellow modelers, World War I plates are always a challenge. I found this Ario HD1 on a year exhibition in October 2022. Very few pieces, but rigging is always difficult for me. A tiny windscreen, decal for Italian service and a short but complete notice. I chose this kit for its apparent ease apart from rigging. I did not know I was engaging in the longest and most discouraging time of my model maker's life. Even if 100% invisible, I removed the injection points inside the fuselage. Then return to the classic stages. I should have built the tank before I painted. I made a dry fit with a very small amount of glue. I checked the position of the tank in the fuselage before glue it firmly. Then I repaired the small damage of the paint. I hand painted the wooden structure with various acrylic colors. Depth is added with Tamiya panel light accent. The back of the seat seemed too thick, so I milled it. I simulated the wicker with a dark brown ink pen. I remade the edge cushion with Mr. Surfacer, it has been easy to paint it. The seat belts were not included in my kit, but I had them in my stock. I simulated the inside rigging with fused wire. Yes, I'm crazy, nobody will see it. A World War I cockpit is almost empty. This strange piece with two black hoses is the carburetor.
I guess many of us use Tamiya liquid glue. When the pot is almost empty, I put a toothpick at the end of the brush to get the remaining glue. Sometimes hands are more precise than tweezers. Some casting defects are treated by sanding. I have inserted 0.3mm brass tube across the fuselage. It will help me to pass the vertical fin control cables. Some putty and minor sanding is needed on the belly. I replace the horizontal stabilizer struts by brass tubes. Rigging is made of 008mm fishing wire painted in black with an ink pen. The entire tailplane rigging is made of a single wire that joins and is glued under the fuselage. I replaced the rear stand with a steel rod machine with my Dremel. The silent parts are lightened with a white watercolor pencil.
the Italian national colors are painted on the intrados of both upper and lower wings. The problem started at this stage. The shack masts are too thick and mispositioned. Even if I tried to glue it in force, the main mast did not hold. To want to repair too much whatever happens, I broke everything. So I took it all apart. I rebuilt thinner steel wire shack mast in the right side. Then I built the main mast in evergreen profile. I made sure they were long enough to cross the wings. After gluing and sanding, I had to recreate the wing structure in evergreen. Pretty sanding countless time. I must admit that I have often wanted to give up. In comparison, the cable stay seems almost easy. You may or may not forgive me if I did not film this step. I finally went through. Back to business, here is the first coat of gloss varnish. A wise man is worse too. I could have had the same problems with the landing gear. To avoid them, I inserted copper tubes in the body. Thanks to this, the landing gear legs hold perfectly without destroying what I had so much trouble doing until then. I am lucky to be a member of a club where I learn a lot. My friends often box me in front of my slowness, but finally it's time to put the decals. Before going any further, it should be noted that Edouard made a mistake on the vertical fin flag decals. Easy to paint. It is easy to paint the tiles with the first layer of very diluted dark grey. To get a wood effect on the struts, I used different oil paint in dark brown tones diluted in petrol F. I tried several methods to paint the wood veins on the poplar. The one that worked was first paint the dark brown, I masked it with thin Tamiya tape strips, then I painted the light brown. It took some touch-ups on the poplar, I made them freehand. With the matte varnish, the assembly of the plane itself is finally finished. Oops, I almost forgot the windscreen. I modified an aero product figurine at the kepi before painting it. I 
I start with a black layer followed by a white one in zenithal spray. Then a long process of various acrylic colors, washes, etc. I am unable to show you all the steps to paint my figurine. I have great admiration for those who can do it. I give the last shades with watercolor pencils. I paint the eyes with a 005mm ink pen before a last layer of matte varnish. On an artist frame, I paint a dark brown acrylic color layer. Then I spread electrostatic grass on PVA glue. And finally, this is the end of the longest assembly I have ever made.